This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. It's currently Saturday morning and I have a really fun weekend sewing project planned so I thought I would pick up the camera and film a little bit of a sew with me video today. I love making these types of videos and I really enjoy watching them as well so hopefully you do too and maybe this video will keep you company while you do your own weekend sewing projects. The project I have planned to make today is an Alexa Chung inspired jacket so I have seen this particular Alexa Chung coat all over Instagram. Um, it is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I love the fact that it has this really cute pop of gingham along the collar and the cuffs. I just think that is the most adorable thing ever. And I wanna have a go at replicating something similar for my own wardrobe today. Instead of making it like the long trench coat style, I'm instead going to make a little cropped jacket version. Um, so it's going to be slightly different, but I think a little crop jacket is just gonna be the perfect addition to my wardrobe. And I think it will also work really nicely with some of my dresses over the winter months. So the pattern I'm going to be using today to create this jacket is the Stacker Jacket by Papercut Patterns. I decided to go with this pattern because it already comes fully lined. Um, I was looking at a few different patterns that didn't have lining and I haven't really made a lined jacket before. So I figured I would go this one because it's that really cute cropped length that I kind of want to go for. And the pattern is fully lined so I'm able to add that really adorable gingham onto the inside of the jacket and I'm thinking of also making the collar gingham as well just to make it look like the Alexa Chung one a little bit. So I'll leave a link to this pattern I'm using down in the description below and last night I spent a bit of time watching The Office and cutting out all of the pattern pieces in my size. I purchased the PDF version and got it printed at the A0 size just to make it easy and save me having to tile all the pieces together. And so I cut it all out at the size four, which I was kind of between sizes with the paper cut patterns. So hopefully it won't be too big, but I think I'd prefer the jacket to be a little bit more roomy than too small. So yeah, I'm going with size four for my jacket. <laughs> And the fabric I'm going to be using for this jacket is obviously this beautiful gingham fabric for the lining. This is actually a gingham linen fabric by A&R Fabrics and they kindly sent me this fabric. So I was very, very spoiled and lucky to receive this. And for the main part of the jacket, I'm going to be using this mustard corduroy fabric. I have had this fabric in my stash for the longest time. I managed to pick it up really cheap on clearance once and so I bought a whole heap of it and I've kind of been waiting for the perfect project for it and I think this jacket is going to be it. Hopefully the colour is picking up okay on camera. I feel like it's picking it up quite light, like it looks a bit washed out on the screen, um, but it's a really beautiful caramelly mustard colour in real life. So like I said, I haven't really made a lined jacket like this before. I think I have once when I was first learning how to sew um, and I remember it being quite a challenge at the time. So who knows how this project is going to turn out, but I'm really excited for the challenge and I think it will be fun to just spend the weekend making this really cute jacket. So to start with, I'm going to spend some time cutting out all of the pieces. I need to have a look at the instructions and figure out exactly what style I want to make and I think there's a couple of pocket choices to choose from. So once I figure out what pieces I need, I'm going to lay it out on the fabric and spend some time cutting them out. Okay, so according to the pattern, there are two variations, which I think just means two pocket versions you can make. So I do think I want to go the variation with the lower pockets, but I actually do really like the look of the pockets with the flap. So I think I might, yeah, do variation one, but with variation two's pockets. Hopefully that is doable. Um, I'm sure we'll come to that eventually, but that is the plan. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so it took me a good two hours, but all of the jacket pieces are cut out. And while I'm sewing today, I'm listening to a podcast called West Cork, which so far is really creepy and fascinating, but obviously very terrible. It's about a murder that happened in the town of West Cork. So yeah, I'm just going to be listening to that as I stitch up this jacket today. Um, so let's head on to the instructions and see where I have to start. I really love how I can just have the instructions up on my laptop and save paper by not printing it all out. Um, so according to the instructions, we have to start with the pockets and having a quick read through, it looks like I can't merge the two variations together. So I can either choose between these flat pockets at the top of the jacket or the patch pockets which, let me find them, here they are, um, kind of sit on the center, like at the center of the jacket. Um, I really, really do like the flat pockets. I think they're really cute. So I'm gonna opt for that variation instead. So let me have a quick read of the instructions and we'll attempt to make these in the same pockets. <laughs> To start with, I've placed the pocket bag onto the jacket front and then to stitch it together, I have to kind of stitch in this rectangle shape, um, which I've just drawn out with my water erasable pen. And then I will clip the corners and remove this rectangle of fabric. I have no idea. I've never done anything like this before. So we will just have to wait and see how it turns out. pockets are complete look at them they're just so adorable so there's like a little pocket bag on the inside and then the flap just covers it perfectly I just think that is the most adorable little pocket ever so now according to the instructions I have to attach the back yoke to the back and then we can attach the front pieces to the back. for a little tea break and so far so good the jacket is coming along very nicely so I've obviously done the front pockets and I also just attached the sleeves which attached pretty nicely I think there are a few little nicks where they've just kind of bunched up a bit and gathered but I don't think it's a big enough deal to undo it because 
sleeves are tricky and especially when working with thick fabric like cord I think they look pretty good and I'm now up to doing the gingham collar hopefully it's going to turn out just as nice as the Alexa Chung jacket um but Obviously, it is going to be quite a contrast, this gingham onto the cord, but I'm excited to whip this collar up and see how it all looks together. Oh my goodness, it is looking adorable. I absolutely love this gingham collar. I just think the black and white gingham against the mustard of the cord looks so nice. It looks so similar to the Alexa Chung one. I'm really, really happy with how it's looking. Um, now I think it's time to add the lining onto the inside of the jacket. This is something, again, I haven't really done before. I'm really excited to give it a go. I did make this velvet coat that is lined but as you can see the lining has just kind of been uh stitched in there not very well this one is actually going to be made up properly so i'm excited to see how it turns out also here is a little look at the gingham pocket as well i just love these little pops of gingham against the mustard i just think it works so nicely together we're halfway there I think this is such a cute idea having a little halfway mark in the pattern instructions just makes it all seem a lot more doable and I love the fact that I know that I'm halfway through making this dream jacket I'm up to this part here where I have to attach the sleeves of the lining to the sleeves of the jacket and I'm so confused. Um, yeah, this is the part I knew I would probably get stuck at. Um, so far it's looking okay. I've attached the lining to the neck edge um, and I think it's going to be fine. <laughs> I just can't for the life of me work out what I'm meant to do next. And it's getting pretty late in the day now. I've been sewing all day long and I've actually been loving it so much. I love trying out new patterns and this one is no exception. I'm just blown away with how a jacket is put together. I think it's just so fascinating and I'm really proud of the progress I've managed to achieve today. But I think I'll take a break for now and look at this whole lining situation with fresh eyes in the morning. Okay, so it's the next day now and before we get in and start tackling this whole lining situation let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of this video Skillshare. Skillshare has been such an amazing supporter and sponsor of this channel so if you've been watching my videos for a while I'm sure you know what they're all about but if you're new here Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious type people. 
On Skillshare, you can find classes on a range of different topics, including business, photography, design, sewing, craft, and each class is curated to make it super easy for you to learn new and practical skills, meaning there are no ads to interrupt your learning and there are constantly new classes being added to the platform all the time, so there's always something new for you to go and explore. One of my favorite classes that I've taken recently is one called Illustrated Lettering, Drawing Intricate Floral Forms by Gemma O'Brien. Gemma is just such an expert in her field and she's such a great teacher as well and the class itself is just so beautiful to watch and so inspiring and as someone who isn't a very confident drawer I definitely learned some new skills that I am able to apply straight away so if you'd like to explore Skillshare for yourself then the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will receive a free trial of Skillshare premium membership and then after that it costs less than ten dollars a month for the annual subscription thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video let's get back into it and let me see if I can figure out how to put this lining together. Okay, so the sleeves are joined together. I just need to stitch around this edge um, and then hopefully once it's flipped out the lining will sit nicely inside. Okay so I'm up to a part where I'm really confused so I have to cut a small strip of fabric from the lining and then attach it to both the jacket and the lining underarm seam allowance. Um, I'm guessing in theory, this is the underarm of the jacket here and the underarm of the lining is here. Um, so I'm assuming I just need to stitch one end onto the seam allowance here and then attach it, the other end, to the other seam allowance. That's what I'm getting from the instructions. I hope that's right. Apparently it's just to help the lining stay in place when you turn it all the right side out. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attach this little strip of fabric and see if it works. Hopefully it does. That was definitely the most fiddly part of this whole project so far, um, but I have managed to attach this little piece to the seam allowance of the underarm on both the lining and the main fabric. So hopefully that means the lining will stay in place when I eventually flip the lining the right side out. Okay, so it's now time for the magical part where I will now turn the whole jacket in through this little opening here to make the lining all sit nicely on the inside. Fingers crossed, it works. I am so close to being finished with this jacket. Now what I need to do is kind of top stitch along the front and bottom just to make the interfacing and this little facing here 
set nice and still where it should um, and then all that's left to do is add the buttons I think. stitch these buttons onto the jacket, I would spend some time giving my thoughts about this pattern. This is the first paper cut pattern that I have ever tried and I have enjoyed making it so much. I think the instructions were just laid out so beautifully and they were really easy to understand as well. The diagrams were super helpful and I'm really, really impressed with how this jacket looks. I think if I was to make it again, I would probably go a smaller size. I'm going to try it on properly in a minute, but I have tried it on throughout the making process and I feel like it might be slightly too big. But either way, I'm super happy with it. And because it is a little bit bigger, I know I'll be able to wear my cardigan underneath and some thicker jumpers as well, which over winter is only going to be a good thing. It's definitely a pattern I will want to hold on to and make more jackets like this in the future. I just don't think you can beat a beautifully handmade jacket. The whole putting the lining together and then pulling it out at the end to make it all seamless on the inside is just such a magical thing. Um, I'm really, really proud of this make. And I also am really glad that I've been able to use this beautiful cord fabric at last as well. So yeah, if you're looking for a really um, beautiful jacket pattern, I definitely recommend you check the Stacker Pattern by Papercut Patterns out. And it's also been really nice to just spend a weekend making one project from start to finish. It's not something I've done for a long time. And obviously it's been a lot of fun to document the whole process with you and take you with me on this sewing journey. And the jacket is complete. I have just brought the mirror in so I can give you a good look at what it looks like. Um, I'm so happy with it. I think it is adorable. I absolutely love the, the little pops of gingham. I just think against the mustard cord, it looks so nice together. I've also just rolled up the cuffs so you can see that little pop of mustard at the arms as well. Like I just said, the jacket is slightly bigger than I'd hoped, but now that it's made up, I'm actually happy about it because I will be able to wear all of my hand knitted cardigans and jumpers underneath um, and stay extra snuggly and warm in this jacket. But yeah, I'll insert some actual footage of me wearing this now so you can get a good look at what this jacket looks like on. Your pockets? No, not those ones. So I hope you enjoyed coming with me as I make this really adorable jacket. Um, it has been so much fun to document the whole process and I feel really proud of myself that I've managed to make a fully lined jacket like this. It is just such a beautiful piece of clothing and I feel very lucky to have it in my wardrobe. If you did enjoy this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more sewing type videos like this one. Have a lovely day and thanks for watching.